my first expert is the VP and GM of our desktop services. Um, some of you may know him as the CEO of a company called Frame that we acquired a year ago. Now we've put all of our end user computing initiatives under one roof, and he is the man. So please help me welcome Nikola Bozinovich. Hi, Nikola. Hey, Monica. Good to see you. How are you? Great to see you. Yes, welcome. Now, you've been at Nutanix for a year now. So tell us, how is it going for you? It's been a blast. Um, it really has been a blast um, coming from a startup and continuing at startup space at a scale. Uh, there is no company that has so much innovation going on. And what excites me so much is that there's probably not a company in the world that cares so much about infrastructure when it comes to end user computing. Mm -hmm. And that's been such a core workload for Nutanix um, from the early days. And we really balance all these paradoxes of on-prem and cloud and um, perpetual and subscription and software and a service. And when it comes to broker, um, Citrix, Horizon, and Frame. And we just try to do the right thing for the customer as one EUC team. That's great. I know that end user computing is a big deal for us. So what are we going to talk about here? So we're going to talk about three things. Uh, we're going to okay. start with some history. Yep. Uh, why Nutanix is uh, so founded in uh, end user computing and VDI, virtual apps and desktops. We're going to bring a special guest here, a big uh, uh, customer of Nutanix. Yep. And then we're going to share with you what's coming up in the future. That's great. We always love to hear customer stories. But let's start with the history first. Absolutely. And um, we are here in Denmark. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Let me just see. OK. Yep. We're here in Denmark, a um, country that's very rich in history. Uh, and Danes are very proud of their history. Um, so what I learned over the last couple of days is that Danish flag is not only gorgeous, it's the oldest continuously used flag in the world. And it started, believe it or not, 800 years ago. In 1219, there was a big battle that Danes were fighting with Estonians, I believe. And it was going back and forth, back and forth, but then a red cloth fell from the sky, and red cloth had a white cross on it, and it gave Danes the strength, and uh, they won. So they stuck with what's working. Yeah. And it's been working for them for 800 years. They're very happy, delighted. Not. And uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a great story of um, you know, sticking with what works. Uh, when Nutanix started 10 years ago, the workload that not really fell from the sky, I think it was more, <laughs> <laughs> more <laughs> thoughtful than that, but the workload that was such a great fit for hyperconvergent infrastructure was VDI. And in early days, it amounted, it amounted to 80% um, uh, of the business. These days, it's still a massive business. It's uh, about a quarter of what Nutanix does. And hyperconverged is such a great fit because of great performance, right. uh, because it scales linearly because of delight for user experience. So. Um, it's, um, it's something that we are committed to, that we're doubling down as one end user computing team in Nutanix trying to do what's right for the customer. That's great. So let's talk about the solutions. Like, is, you said it's a complete solution. Absolutely. So not only it's a big business, but uh, it gives you a choice of uh, going with Citrix, going yeah. with VMware, traditional brokers, and then with Frame and how we balance it all, how we make it uh, all work for you on-prem and in the cloud. And then finally, um, it's a lot more than just a product. Yep. Uh, it's been our focus this year to really bring solutions for virtual apps and desktops that include a lot more. So it's not just the broker, it's a file server, it's micro-segmentation, and many other things. Why don't you show us an example of that solution? Sure. Let's do it. So um, four months ago in um, Anaheim, at .next Anaheim, we um, announced um, that Frame, which is the company that uh, we started six years ago and joined Nutanix last year, mm -hmm. is now supporting Nutanix uh, platform. So that means that the cloud broker uh, that sits as a service in the cloud can orchestrate desktops, not only in the public cloud, but also on-prem. And Frame is all about delight. It's all about simplicity. It's all about how we can do more in fewer clicks. And uh, what I want to show you now 
is how from a single pane of glass you can do it all. So um, last dot next, we showed the demonstration how long it takes. It's about 90 seconds to connect your data center. Mm -hmm. So let's say you run Nutanix data center from Prism Central. In 90 seconds, you connect that as a resource to the frame service. From that moment on, that really becomes your private cloud that sits hand in hand with public clouds. And I'm here starting a creation of a new VDI environment. Mm -hmm. And I can see the private cloud that I just uh, connected earlier today, that's Nutanix, it's sitting in California, I can pick my image, and basically, with minimal configuration, I'm now creating a VDI environment in uh, California in my private cloud. But let's not stay there, I'm going to add account, let's try it on Azure, you can see all the regions, exactly the same user experience, see all the regions, uh, let's create one in West Western Europe, Again, pick an image, you can do some configuration, click Create, and the new account is now being created in um, Azure in West Europe. Now, why stop there? Let's go Amazon, and for fun, let's pick Sydney. Um, again, couple of clicks. We are creating a third VDI environment from the single pane of glass. And as of yesterday, we are in general availability on GCP, and um, let's do that in Brazil, um, again, in just 60 seconds, with less than 15 clicks, wow. with minimal configuration, from a single pane of glass, we created four VDI environments on four continents, on four cloud providers. That's brilliant. Thank you. So for simple and delightful uh, virtual desktops, Frame is a great choice. Now, uh, we love Citrix, we love working with Citrix. Um, Nutanix is a great uh, platform for running Citrix workloads. And what we have here, we have a demo that after seeing such an excited demo yesterday on Zy Clusters, yeah. I challenged the team. We have some of the Citrix best experts, CTP, Citrix Technology Professionals of the company, and I challenged them, hey, can we just move our demo from on-prem to Zy Clusters? Mm -hmm. And Jerrion and Case, our awesome CTPs, you know, stepped up, and this yeah. is what I'm showing here. So I'm logging into Citrix storefront that is running on Zy Clusters that was created yesterday, and here is a brokered connection into Citrix completely stood up in Zy Clusters on Nutanix. Wow, that's awesome. You can see this is running on Nutanix, but when you look at the system information, the hypervisor is AHV. Mm -hmm. And that's a great benefit of using public cloud as a resource, but maintaining the same image between what you're doing on-prem and what you are doing in a cloud. But it's a lot more than just um, a broker. Um, we are talking about solutions here, yes. and we have a great product. Uh, uh, it's called Files, Nutanix Files. It has more than 1,500 customers, and it's um, available uh, directly from Prism. We're very excited about that. It got a really big refresh this summer, mm -hmm. and uh, it added new version of file analytics. And uh, this is what I want to show you next. All right. So it can. Um, not only tell you if you're running out of storage, what type of files are you using, but, but it can tell you what's been going on in the system. So if I go into file analytics, I can see what users have been up to on our system. So let's have a little fun with that. Right? <laughs> so Who are you going to pick now? I'm curious. Okay. <laughs> so how about we see what Dira has been up to? Let's okay. do it. Let's do it. Uh, Diraj. <laughs> OK, search for a user. Uh, Diraj here. Uh, okay, anti-fragility, but it looks like Dira has been a lot about subscription models, multi-clouds, uh, and a lot of things that are, I'm sure, top Wait, of his mind. Do I see mind. cricket in there? Never mind. Uh, I think I saw cricket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so let's, uh, let's see what Sammy uh, has been up to as well, uh, the, the European sales leader. Uh, Sammy, uh, it's a lot of receipts for travel back and forth, Paris, Heathrow, <laughs> uh, and travel. He's working hard. He's working he's hard. Working he's, hard. He's, he's traveling yeah. a lot. Mm. And then finally, um, you know, let's see what Rajiv's been up to. Uh, <laughs> must be some cool new tech here coming. <laughs> okay, Rajiv. Uh, 
Okay, it's a kind of a gnome reservation. It looks like you got inspired last night. <laughs> Uh-oh, I think I'm hanging out with the wrong people, I think. <laughs> I should be hanging out with Rajiv. <laughs> so, it's just kind of uh, a, a quick way to show you how you can have powerful audit trail and see what's going on in the system with um, uh, powerful analytics and anomaly detection with the last version of files. Okay. So, to show us how it all works in real world, I want to invite um, from Düsseldorf, uh, Michael Jensen from Vodafone. Hey, Michael. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. So, can you tell us a little bit about your use case? Yes, sure. Um, we operate a Citrix Senap environment based on traditional three-tier architecture for roughly 50,000 concurrent users. And there are very important use cases there. A, our, most of our customer contact centers and our retail environment, as well as some of our shared services. So what are some problems with the three tier that you were trying to solve? Yeah, the, the top three problems in the existing environment. One, everybody knows about that, the end of support of the Xenop 6.5 version, as well as the underlying Windows operating system. Then B, there had been some severe outages over the past, and we tried to increase resilience of the environment to better handle these cases. And then the third bullet point is um, easier scaling, right? In a traditional 3 tier architecture, that's very hard to achieve. Sometimes it takes months, and we want to speed up here. So why did you start looking at uh, hyperconverged infrastructure? Yeah, on, on the scaling perspective. So we are a true believer that server-based computing is the natural fit for hyperconverged. And um, scaling up these environments is just by adding nodes. And with the analogy to Lego, it's just by, as you would add a Lego brick, right? And um, yeah, we started this journey in 2015 already. Some of my uh, colleagues in the company were already on the way to a software-defined data center. And by coincidence, uh, we had the pleasure to host uh, um, your CEO in Dusseldorf. And we were supposed to talk about um, the hyperconverged infrastructure, but it ended up in this more than three-hour session talking about trends in EUC and the overall IT industry. So very amazing, and I can remember like yesterday. So how did you end up choosing Nutanix? Yeah, um, we started, let's say, reference customer visits. Um, we had an internal um, Nutanix use case already with our New Zealand colleagues, which just rolled out a, a VDI environment in 2017. Then we did talk with the final four vendors. Um, there were negotiation back and forth, um, commercial terms, and so on. But then at the end of the year, we took the decision to uh, standardize all our um, server-based computing workloads in Vodafone on Nutanix HCI. And what was the key for uh, Nutanix winning a Vodafone account? Yeah, there are two key uh, topics here. First, of course, the technology. So the natural fit to Citrix environments. Um, and that what we saw during the POCs is that some of the competition, they were just lacking features, right? So like hypervisor choice, for example, like the deep integration into the Citrix portfolio, and then as you has just right demoed, the availability of a file server as well on the platform. But this is only the technology side, right? There is more. We are mm, talking about automation. We are talking about cloudification. But I'm a truly believer that one of the most important topics is people. We had a tremendous support from your guys, and we still have great contacts with them. They're going the extra mile, and I want to thank the team here on stage as well. That's awesome to hear. So fast forward. <laughs> fast forward to now. Where are you now in your journey? Yeah, we, we have deployed uh, most of the infrastructure already in our three main European data centers for the European local markets. Um, the first users are live, and we hope to finish the migration for over 5,000 apps. And you can imagine that it's taking some time to validate that on a new operating system, on a new infrastructure. We hope to finish this up within the next six to nine months. That was awesome. Thank it's you, Michael.
One more thing, oh. one more thing, of course. So we are doing a uh, end-user computing super session right after this keynote, right, with some amazing Nutanix folks. And if you want to learn more about our story, please join us there. Thank you so much. Come here, Michael, at the super session. Vodafone, 50,000 concurrent users, 5,000 apps all running on Nutanix. Thanks, Thanks Michael. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. All right, wow. That was a fantastic story. We always love hearing from real customers. So Nicola, you talked about our commitment to EUC. We heard from a real customer. What's next for us? You know, next is innovation. And that next is innovation both when it comes to technology and when it comes to go-to-market, when it comes to delivery. Uh, as you just saw, we added the last uh, remaining public cloud. We added Google. So we have really full coverage of infrastructure options for you. So we're going to continue to invest in innovating frame. But this is really a big commitment that we're making in the next 10 years to mm -hmm. virtual apps and desktops that are uh, growing because of data center modernization and also consumer customer experience that's becoming very, very important. We're going to market with Citrix workloads and all the partners in the ecosystem. And some of them, uh, you know, we just announced uh, this week. Uh, it's not only HPE, but with Wipro, we yep. launched a new service. So uh, stay tuned to what we're doing with uh, end user computing. And uh, thank you all. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right.